Have you ever wondered why some creatures are referred to by their scientific names? It is an intriguing tale all things considered. A basic history of how animals obtain their names in the scientific community is shown below. In this video, we'll talk about where animals' scientific names come from. Before proceeding subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for upcoming alerts. When scientists first began classifying animals, they did so based on the physical traits of each species. This worked out quite well for a time, but as more and more species of creatures came to light, it grew progressively more difficult. Therefore, Carl Linnaeus, working in the 18th century, devised an innovative method for naming different species of animals. He categorized them into groups according to the commonalities they shared and assigned Latin names to each of the categories. As one example, the term mammalia refers to the collective classification of all mammals. This classification system is still in use today, and it has been crucial in advancing our knowledge of the animal world. However, those who are unfamiliar with it may find it to be rather perplexing. I cannot stress how important it is for you to watch this video if you want to get more knowledgeable on the classification of animals. It does an excellent job of conveying the fundamentals in a manner that is both simple and succinct. Scientific names are informative. Every known species on the earth has a two part scientific name, at least in theory. This is known as binomial nomenclature. These names are significant because they enable people all around the globe to communicate clearly about animal species. This works because there are worldwide regulations for naming creatures, and zoologists attempt to avoid naming the same item more than once, though this does happen sometimes. Because of these naming requirements, each scientific name is distinct. For example, if the scientific name Lipomus macrochirus is assigned to bluegill sunfish, no other animal species may be granted the same name. So, if you are a Russian scientist investigating sunfish cousins and want to speak about bluegill sunfish with a Canadian researcher, you both use the scientific term and understand precisely what the other is saying. Scientific names are often intended to convey information about the animal's interactions with other creatures. Each species' scientific name is made up of a general name, generic epithet, and a particular name, specific epithet. In the case of bluegill sunfish, the generic epithet is lipomus and the specific epithet is microchips. The generic epithet is the name of the genus, plural of genera, in which bluegill sunfish are found, lipomus. Some genera have just one species, however, the majority of genera have several species. Other sunfish species in the genus Lipomus include Lipomus cyanellus, green sunfish, Lipomus megalotus, longier sunfish, and Lipomus jubosus, pumpkin seed sunfish. It is worth noting that all of these species have the same generic name, indicating that they are regarded to be more closely related to one another than to any other species of fish. In some ways, the genus is the first level of taxonomic order since it contains all species that are regarded to be most closely related. Scientific names are often descriptive as well, implying something about the species. Longier sunfishes, for example, have long and noticeable operculum flaps, a hardened structure extending from the gill flap, that give them the appearance of having long ears. Megalotus is a particular name that means large ears. Yellow, headed blackbirds, for example, have the scientific name Xanthocephalus Xanthocephalus, which means yellow, headed, yellow head. Scientific names may also include the names of persons who are involved in the discovery or description of the species. Myotis kenii, also known as Keen's mouse, eared bat, was named after a gentleman called Keen. Myotis means mouse, eared in Greek. They may also include allusions to the locations of the species, such as southern right whales, Eubalina australis, which translates to Southern True, Baleen. Finally, some scientific names mirror the popular names given to these animals by indigenous peoples, such as Oncephalus gigna, a tiny South American cat species known as Cygna by Chileans and Argentinians. Common names can be misleading. Common names, unlike scientific names, are not unique. As a consequence, Common name use might cause misunderstanding regarding what species is being referred to and how it relates to other animals. Badgers is an example. Honey badgers, Molivora capensis, North American badgers, Taxidea taxis, Eurasian badgers, Meles meles, 
Stink badgers, Mitos javanensis, and ferret badgers are all visually similar, Melagale personata. Even though they are all named badgers and are all members of the same mammalian family, they are not related to each other. There are several instances of confused and repetitive common names, just keep in mind that the common name cannot tell you anything about the animal's evolutionary history. Scientific names are sometimes changed. Taxonomy, the study, and practice of naming living species is an ever-changing discipline. When our scientific knowledge of animal species and their interactions evolves, scientific names may evolve as well. For example, all tiny cat species were originally classified as felis. They have now been divided into many genera to better illustrate key evolutionary distinctions between them. Bobcats were once known as Felis rufus, but this term has now been changed to Lynx rufus. Unfortunately, earlier scientific material on bobcats will still be available under the name Felis rufus, and some sources may not immediately recognize the name change. Some species have acquired many scientific names. In such circumstances, one name for the species is selected and the other names are referred to as synonyms of the species name. For example, the generic name Nycteris was originally used for all bats of the genus Lazyurus. As a result, Lazyurus borealis was also known as Nycteris borealis. Lazyurus borealis is the accepted scientific name, whereas Nycteris borealis is considered a synonym. If you cannot discover information for a certain scientific name, Try exploring the taxonomy databases we utilize to be sure the species does not go by another name. This video has come to an end. Before leaving please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more content. Also, comment down below what are your thoughts on this video.